the sun comes up on Galway Bay. Just a few yards away from these tranquil scenes wait 90 cars who will shortly shatter the February silence when the Skoda Sport Galway International Rally, the first round of the Dunlop Tarmac Championship, gets underway. The 1990 winner, Austin McHale, starts as firm favourite and the Dubliner is confident with a new engine management system in the BMW and a new tyre deal from Dunlops. I'd like to think that our chances are fairly good for, um, for winning the event this year, Plum, and um, the car is going very well there. They've a new modification done to this electronic system that was on the car. It was given a lot of problems with this misfire, so um, the car seems, we seem to have gained about another 30, maybe 35 brake horsepower, so I'm very happy with it at the moment. Running at number two, the National Rally champion, Richard Smith. Richard, you're not here without some dramas last night, I believe. Yes, um, the guys bought a new van during the week. Uh, well, a new and inverted Commons van, and it, it broke down last night, so they didn't get here till about 11 o'clock. We got, I got to bed at 1 o'clock, whereas I wanted to get to bed at 10 o'clock, so I tired this morning. At number three, Bill Connolly, now in a BMW M3. It, it seems quite different to the Manta. And we're, um, I think we'll take things a little bit easy just to see how we settle into the car. Now, it's a big investment. Are you a bit nervous at this stage? Yeah, I think I was driving stages all night last night in the bed, so um, yeah, I am nervous. Group N interest is in Kenny McKinstry's new two-wheel drive Calibre Cosworth and the equally new car of his arch-rival Bob Fowden. Bob, the difference between you and Kenny is you've got four-wheel drive. That could be useful this weekend. Well, it could be useful. It would be more useful if it was wet, but uh, there's a lot of gravel on the stages, a lot of gravelly junctions. Obviously, we should have a little bit of an advantage. But it's a brand new car. I've only driven it 30 miles night before last, so I don't think I'm going to mix it with Kenny this weekend. Well, not in the beginning, anyway. Minutes to go before the start of the Galway Rally, and sadly, no James Cullen in the entry list. Yeah, it's very sad to be down here and, and having to watch the, the lads compete this weekend and not join in the fun. Your losses are gain, I think you might say, this weekend. You're going to be able to give us expert comment uh, throughout the event. First of all, very icy as we can see. What problems is that going to give them on the stages? That will present with the obvious problems that you have even in road driving with icy patches on the road this morning. Most of the top people will have their ice note crews out on the stages, putting in the places on their notes where the ice is on the road. The first two stages are reported to be bone dry, so they shouldn't present a problem. The second two stages are more farmland country and they're quite mucky. A lot of white frost and I think there'll be a few icy patches there and that will make the second two stages, I think, very interesting from a spectating point of view anyhow. The start of the Skoda Sport Galway Rally is in Air Square, but the real action on day one is in the Churum area, where a loop of four stages will be tackled three times. Austin McHale opens his 1991 tarmac account in blistering style. On the opening stages, he takes a demoralising two minutes out of the opposition. And inside the car, with Dermot O'Gorman on the pace notes, we see why. Absolute right, 270. Easy right, 70, repeat, easy right, 70, easy right and left, 150, easy right, 130. The opposition, if you could call it that, is strangely not coming from the contemporary machinery, but from Frank Maher's 10-year-old escort, a combination which is so often shown in Galway in the past. Also turning the heads, Donny Keating's equally ancient Opel Ascona. Bill Connolly is initially very cautious in the BP back BMW, and he's not yet a threat to the top runners. National Rally champion Richard Smith seems in determined mood, but there are others already in big trouble in stage one. John Price has wedged his 6R4 neatly between the stone walls and as Sean Fox's video shows, Kenny McKinstry has no option but to wait. This is known as force majeure in rallying terms and it means Kenny is the innocent victim of someone else's mistake. At last, the metro is cleared and McKinstry follows through, but not before his rival Bob Fowden has arrived. This is an early gift for the Welsh crew who are handed the group end lead. To James Cullen's surprise, John Price seems none the worse for his misdemeanour. McKinstry is the one who has really suffered. Bob Fowden is now the clear leader in Group N, and the four-wheel drive Cosworth won't be easy to catch. 
George Robinson returns to the sport with a revitalised Starlet. This time it's powered by a non-turboed Cosworth engine. He's lost none of his nerve. Luke McCarthy warms up quickly. The court man, seated number 23, is fourth fastest on stage one. And another new name, Stephen Murphy, has moved up to the top Group A class, and he's moving up the top ten. While fellow Carlo man into Nolan in a Group N Cosworth is doing his best to scare co-driver and RTE presenter Michael Lester. I promise you I won't do it again, Michael. You'll be back in RTE to present the Sunday game. Oops. Sorry again, Michael. <laughs> Although the roads are dry, there are odd patches of ice. And again, we're indebted to Sean Fox for this incident. John Carroll's cadet has regained grip at the wrong moment. The front wheel drive dragged him into the wall. Stage three and Richard Smith is in big trouble. He will lose six minutes with punctures on the first loop of stages. It's a moralising blow from which he never fully recovers. Caution, crest 60, turn very fast, way right. Crest 60. We are now in the cold stages north of Tuam, where sudden patches of ice are frequent and Absolute very treacherous. Surprisingly, Dermot O'Gorman does not seem to have pre-knowledge of where these hazards occur on this section Absolute of the route at any rate. Right entry, turn square left. Absolute left, 200. Crest, slight right, 170. The Dubliner, who already has two Galway victories to his credit, is simply in a class of his own. Behind, it is a different story. Donny Keating has moved ahead of Frank Maher in this epic battle between these two classic cars for second place. Bob Fowden not only now leads Group N, but he is also fourth overall. Press on, Stephen Emerson is fifth, and Kenny McKinstry is really pushing the calibre car to make up for that first stage deficit. He's in sixth place. A broken rotor arm at the end of stage two has sadly dropped Luke McCarthy right out of the running after a very promising start. He will shortly retire. And there have been others in the wars. Willie John Dolan's rear end is not a pretty sight. And that little trip into the dry stone masonry that John Carroll performed earlier on has not improved his opal. The first loop of stages have been very fast, faster than the organizers had anticipated. And the top competitors are beating the maximum average speed allowed. That's known as cleaning the stages. We've cleaned the last stage by, I think it was about 25 seconds or 23 seconds, and the second stage by 10. So I don't know what it was a bogus time standard at. If it does, obviously, that'll be about 35 seconds that will be reduced off our lead. So uh, we'll have to check that. Kenny McKinstry is having similar problems. He's cleaning the stages even in a Group N car. The last stage was a really good stage, had a good time on it, and we found out we've cleaned the stage by something like 12 or 13 seconds. So the time so won't count? The time won't count and we took, I think, it was probably eight or nine seconds off Bob Fowden. So, uh, Bob's leading Group N at the moment and we're, I think, about 20, 22 seconds behind him. We went out on the wrong tyres totally this morning and the car has been all over the road and just not able to stop it. So we've been very much off the pace, but we just have to, we're going to try some different tyres now and just try and settle down and get the hang of it. So it's a learning process today? I think so, yes. It's, it's um, quite a lot different for the man, from the Manta and it's very difficult to know what the back of it is going to do. It seems to be going to slide out all the time. And the plan for the rest of today now? Make up a bit of time. Maximum attack.
And maximum attack it is. Robbie Philpot reads the notes on this tight section of the Kilkuna stage. They have a 24 second deficit to make up on Fowden to gain the Group N lead. That crest, 60. Right over crest into one right, 60. Two right, maybe, 60. One right and one left and right. This tight stage is unlikely to be cleaned in time, so it's very important. 100. Three left, 100. Unknown to McKinstry, it's his rival's turn to hit trouble. The new car has acquired a mysterious misfire, which is particularly annoying when you're trying to exit tight corners. This was the stage in which McHale was over a minute quicker than anyone on the first run through, but this time he'll be delayed by punctures. Frank Maher, as brilliant as he is, can't hope to make up the 10-year technology gap between his escort and the BMW. He's edged ahead of Keating for second place, but there's still only seconds in it. The flying Emerson in fifth place. And Stephen Murphy, who gains confidence by the yard as he acclimatises to his new Group A Cosworth. He's seventh. John Price is on a big recovery charge. He's now eighth. And fellow Welshman and Metro driver Peter Lloyd is also hovering around the top ten. The historic entries lead the field back into Tuam service after eight stages of the Skoda Sport Galway Rally. But McHale's domination has not been without its moments, and his lead has been slightly reduced due to an incident on stage five. Austin, to put it mildly, the times have been pretty sensational. Yeah, not too bad, Plum. Um, uh, we had a good run over the first four this morning, there, the fourth stage, we beat the ball getting by about 23 seconds. And the last time over, we beat it by 29. You know, which is no advantage really because you don't get anything far as you just get the bogey time. But we had a problem on the fifth stage, I got two punchers on one side, we were two miles on the end of the stage. We were still fastest by I think one second, so uh, we didn't really, we, we dropped about 50, 20 seconds on it. We're having a good cut there with Donny Keating, we're only two seconds ahead of him going into the last stage, but unfortunately we took a lot of time there on the very last one and the bogey is upsetting things. I think we took eight, nine seconds off of Austin McHale and the bogey is still 9.20, so it leaves us with a good deficit that way. Bob, it hasn't been sounding too healthy. No, we've had a fuel, fuel problem from the word go. We're not too sure what it is. We've changed a few little things. It's definitely losing us about 25 to 30 seconds a stage, unfortunately, but um, possibly we might be able to fix it now. I don't know. Everybody seems to be talking about cleaning stages and bogey times. James Cullen explains the timing system. One of the problems experienced by the competitors in this event is they're beating the bogey times. Uh, a bogey time is the time given by the organizers to complete the stage. It's average in the reason of 70 miles per hour, uh, plus or minus 10 percent. What it means is if you do a stage that the bogey time is seven minutes on, if a competitor does seven minutes, 10 seconds, he's credited with the time of seven minutes, 10 seconds. But if he does a time of, say, six minutes, 55 seconds, he, he's still credited with the seven minutes and what's happened on the, on the last stage, stage 8, most of the top competitors have all got the same time for the stage, but some of them were actually up to 20 seconds quicker than the others. But with the bogey time, that means that all the competitors got the same time for the stage. So it's a little bit unfair to the quicker people on that stage. But in Turm, there are others who have had more serious problems. Can you explain this, job? Well, we decided to follow our sponsor's motto and take the first stop. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be the last one of those type of stops and we'll be right there at the end. Trevor Cather's also stopped after he rolled the Toyota. Well, you see, you get on to my age, you uh, have some small lapse of memory. And so to the final loop of the day. Amazingly, despite appearances, Cather's continues. But Trevor's problems have enabled his class rival, Seamus Gallagher, to go clear. George Cullen in the similar but Group A car leads his class. And in the two-liter modified class, it's a battle between the entertaining escorts of Declan Wilmot from Adair, Connie Smith from Cavan, and Seamus Sands from Newry.
The Young Wait for the Old on Stage 10, as the historic championship runners act as a warm-up to the main action. The battle still rages for second place, but Keating is now losing out slightly to Mara. John Price has gained three places, he's now fifth. And Stephen Murphy continues his excellent drive in sixth place. But Bob Fowden's rally is falling apart. He is caught on this stage by Peter Lloyd, who has now moved up to eighth place overall in the Metro. And Seamus Sands and Chris Patterson are being caught by Ender Nolan and Michael Lester. John O'Brien leads us out into the night and back to those icy northern stages. One right, the two left over a crest, 150. One left in the And below right. zero temperatures, Kenny McKinstry and Robbie Philpot head back to Galway at high speed to end a day that has seen a very high attrition rate. Out of 90 starters, only 49 return after day one. Care, two right maybe, into one right over a crest, into two left. John Price has recovered well to sixth place overall. But ahead of him is the name that everybody is talking about, Stephen Murphy from Carlo. Uh, we had a good day and really enjoyed it. Um, it's much the same type of car as the Corolla, but the power is just unbelievable. And it took me a while just to get used to when I put down my foot on the accelerator, to get used to like the car going sideways a bit. But once I got used to it, I just enjoyed every minute of it. I can't wait for tomorrow. While the rest of the country shivers, the crowd gathers in the County Galway sunshine for day two of the Skoda Sport Galway International Rally. Today's action is southeast of the city. Austin McHale is now just seven stages away from his third Galway victory. James Cullen gives his analysis. Austin McHale leading by a very comfortable margin now, and as you can see, he's just really coasting the car home, uh, doing everything right, clean and tidy, no mistakes, and that's all Austin has to do. Frank Maher with Rory Kennedy in the notes has been truly remarkable, but sadly, once again, the vulnerable RS 1800 won't see the finish. A faulty fuel pump will halt him before the end of the stage. Frank Maher, one of the guys involved in this battle with Tony Keaton, trying very, very hard here, very, very deep into the corner, getting the power on very, very well, and um, usual Frank Maher style. Donny Keating very nearly overcooks it, obviously unaware that Maher is in trouble. Donny has teamed up with his old co-driver Nick Condon for the event. It's an outing neither will forget for a long time. Donny Keating way over the top, really trying hard at the top corner, almost losing it. The car jumps very high in the jump, hard landing, deep under the braking, trying very hard to try and catch Frank and see if he can rattle him in the first few stages try and take a second position away from him. <laughs> Kenny McKinstry leading group end at the moment from Bob Fowden. Uh, coming very deep into the corner, almost too deep, and having to help himself out with the handbrake to get round. Stephen Murphy doing it very well, first time out in the Group A Cosworth, which is a very difficult car to adapt to. He's adapted very well and doing himself very proud this weekend, going fifth now. John Price, with his new navigator and Marie Riley, is a mere 17 seconds behind Murphy and continues to put on the pressure. Bill Connolly and Tom Meany have worked their way up to sixth, but it's a difficult learning curve for the Goresbridge driver. Peter Lloyd, on his second visit to Galway, shows much more confidence this year. to the innovative new city centre stage which has brought the multitudes out to bask in the sunshine as the Skoda Sport rally comes to town.
Justin McHale's car, we get a first-hand experience of the Galway Motor Club's experiment to bring the rally to the people. As Maher is no more, Keating can relax for the first time in this rally. Oh, can he? Further down the stage, the bonnet's up again, and Donny peers through the door to get to the end of this short stage. Stephen Murphy is also in trouble. The turbo is blown, and he will lose three places. John Price continues his charge. He's now fourth. And Stephen Emerson takes us under the bridge and through the chicane. Whereas George Cullen shows there isn't much room for error. And so to the final Last stage. Pressed. Kenny with Group N in the bag is now going flat out for second place overall. Flat Crest 200. There's a maybe flat jump away down here. Flat crest, 150. That maybe flat jump will be taken at over 130 miles an hour. Flat crest, 100. Only 40 seconds flat separate the Cosworth and Keating's Ascona. It's a tall order, but Kenny's certainly going for it. And here comes crest, that big jump. Flat crest, 80 jump, 60 flat crest, 150. And so to the class winners. Seamus Gallagher wins Group N, 1600. With Trevor Cather's amazingly struggling home second. Stephen Price is the 1300cc Group A winner. George Cullen in the Tom Hogan Toyota takes 1600 Group A after a spectacular weekend. John Carroll amazingly survives to win the 2 litre Group A class. Dominic McLaughlin wins the 1600cc modified class. John O'Sullivan wins the 2 litre modified class. Phil Connolly has the consolation of fifth place and some useful Dunlop points despite a disappointing weekend with his BP BMW. John Price should be well pleased with fourth place after that disastrous start. And Kenny McKinstry will not make second but third overall and Group N victory. It's outstanding by anyone's standards. Tony Keating has undoubtedly produced one of the drives of the rally in the Ascona that has seen service with McRae Bonner and James Cullen before he became the owner. But from the start, the outcome was never in doubt, with Austin McHale and Dermot O'Gorman in the Extravision BMW. They've never been challenged, and Austin heads for his third Galway victory. as Mervyn Johnston and Ken Irwin make history by becoming the first winners of a round of the new historic rally championship, the overall winners roll in behind. The Skoda Sport sponsored event has been a big success for the Galway Motor Club and the second win in succession for the man who originally hails from the West. You know, it's nice to uh, win in Galway. I always like to win in Galway because uh, being from West of Ireland originally, uh, I like to come to Galway and get the results down here. So we're very happy to have won the event. It's a good start to the championship. It's a good start to the year, especially as a disappointment in Killarney. So everybody's happy. It's Dermot's first Galway win. We hadn't any major problems. Um, we were a little bit worried about the weather, the, the frost, and but we had a, a good ice note crew out and uh, they did their their work very well. But uh, generally the stages were very dry. And as as Austin said, the weather down here is fantastic at the weekend, and not not what we were expecting at all. James Cullen could create problems for Austin when he returns on the circuit. Donny had his problems today. This morning, halfway through the first stage, we had this serious noise in the back axle. And I understand it's a differential bearing gun and it's, it's the look has so held out all day. It really was touch and go whether you would make it back here or not? Oh, very much so, yeah. <laughs> Galway has seen a very healthy start to the new season. It's Austin's 10th international rally win. 
Donny Keating proved it's still possible to get a good result with an old car. So Austin McHale starts the 1991 Tarmac Championship, as he did in 1990 with a maximum score. But Kenny McKinstry has also 20 points in Group S.